continued the interview with the Premier. Oh, yeah, good. Um, listen, since you've been Premier, have you noticed uh, the issue of social assistance? You know, like you, you met a lot of people, the activists, you see them on the street, sure. uh, the rooming house that was destroyed here a few weeks ago. How are we handling the issue of social assistance here in this province? I mean, I always say there's a two-tier system. Like there's, for an example, uh, I know a woman that used to work for the government. She worked for the government, then she got laid off, went on UI. Worked for the government, laid off. So it was, it's changing. Then she had, uh, she's one of those that war, was on social assistance, went to school, okay. and uh, got a job. But then something happened at work, the personality conflict. And they say, you know, the government said, no, no, we're not going to hire you again. Uh, come on, come on, social assistant. Yeah. Like, we got all kinds of money. You know, I and, mean. And how? we, uh, well, I say we collectively, uh, I don't know how anybody um, is able to live on the amount of money that people have to struggle mm. with on social assistance. You know, uh, the, the first priority, uh, certainly, you know, and the, the best way for, um, someone to be able to have the the dollars that they need to uh, to live vibrantly is is to be able to work uh so that means we need a strong economy you know and and uh opportunities provided for people to uh, to be able to contribute uh it also means that we need an education system that provides the the skills uh that people need so that they are able to work uh within an economy and the other part is we need to ensure that the necessary supports are in place uh, to help those that have specific challenges be able to overcome them. So, no, I think that's the that's the big picture way I think of overcoming ultimately uh, poverty. Uh, there's been a tremendous amount of work that's gone on through poverty reduction, as an example, uh, where what did they do? Um, well, number one, uh, there was an engagement of New Brunswickers to look at the issue of, of poverty mm -hmm. and what types of things we need to uh, be able to do to uh, eat, you know, continue to reduce or eliminate poverty in New Brunswick. So um, there are a number of things that have already been accomplished. One of the things was seeing an increase in minimum wage. Um, there have been a number of increases in minimum wage over the last, uh, uh, last two or three years uh, for uh, again, to provide a higher level of, of living for, for people. Um, things like the work we're doing now, we've brought in a uh, vision and dental program or support mm -hmm. for low-income families for children. Uh, we're uh, working with Dennis Furlong, who's leading a team to uh, bring in a, an insurance program for prescription drugs for low-income New Brunswickers and for you know, the 30% of New Brunswickers that don't have adequate prescription drug coverage. But I, I know that. On, and so the, other, the other piece I would say is we've got a team working on um, renewing or changing the social assistance programming too, again, to uh, ensure that people are able to live adequately as we go forward. This is the capital. The decisions are made here. Could it be also we got a problem with attitude? Like I call them snobs. I'm sorry, that's why I call yeah. them. And they don't. They've never been into a, a person in the shoes of a poor person. Like right now, the social assistance office is across the river to the highest peak of the city with no transportation. Sure. And it's not good. No. And it sort of gives the attitude. Well, we we don't want you and. They don't seem to understand, like it goes to the, through the justice system also. Then, you know, if you, we're not going to talk about my problems, but if you turn around and then uh, the cop charge you and then uh, uh, you don't have a lawyer. And the, the, the legal aid system, I mean, that's social assistant, once they get a record, then the legal aid is not really, like Kelly Lamrock said before they, they won a few years ago, he says, we had the worst legal aid system in New Brunswick. But then they got in power. And they still, eliminated it. They eliminated more. Yeah. And 
once that poor person gets a record, you know, I mean, it's, I know it's too, it's too, 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 too much of an issue to discuss in this video, but how can we get together? Yeah. What, what, I, what I would say, a couple things. The first one is the poverty reduction piece. Um, the process that took place, it brought um, citizens, community leaders, government leaders, and business leaders together. Never seen that. Um, it brought people living in poverty, for I think for the first time, into part of the discussion, part of the dialogue. So that's a that's a really good place to start. Um, if if we, you know, I know I know I'll, I'll say a number of people who work within the social assistance programming. Uh, they're, they are good people, they care deeply. The way the programming's designed, it's very black and white, it's eligibility driven. Uh, and I'm sure there are reasons why it's designed the way it is, okay? But you can be sure, you know, and what may, sometimes people may seem very hard. Um, you know, uh, I have friends who work for that organization and and I can tell you that they care deeply about work, uh, the plight of people and, and opportunities for people. And, you know, they wouldn't be involved if, if they didn't. Um, you know, and I can't speak for everyone, but certainly, you know, uh, accessibility is an important issue. And, you know, and I know you've raised that before. And how do you, um, you know, how, how, do, uh, how does somebody living in poverty uh, get to where they need to, Impossible. to be, you know. So that's a that's a fair that's a very fair issue to uh, to bring up. Speaking of fair issue, see that there? It's growing. Uh, yes, it's growing. Haven't rode a bicycle since last summer. Now we're not going to get no details. Uh, what about this helmet thing? Are we going to look into that? That the poor can ride a bicycle? Look, uh, a black figure. Uh, Charles, if you need a helmet, I will no, give no, you a helmet. No, no. I, you know? I, listen, I had somebody told me, my next door neighbor, Radical Edge, he said, I'll give you a $300 helmet, but I know you won't wear it. Yeah, I yeah. said, exactly. Scottish. Look, no, but I mean, in Montreal, um, Quebec, all over. And, and I know you've sent me some information. Yeah. So I've sent that information on to, to have a, a good look at it. Uh, it's, it's, I, I know it's about balancing uh, the safety and security of citizens. Oh, I can understand that. Um, you know, and along with personal rights and freedoms, and and I, I understand that, um, but uh, but I have I have taken that information and, yeah. and sent it on. This lobby is going to keep his mouth shut for that, but that's good. That's very good. Okay.